Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Pecan View. It's a Peaks uh, can message viewer monitoring tool uh, for logging and analyzing can messages um, from Peak. Uh, if you have a Peak Pecan adapter, uh, this would be the software you typically use on Windows. Uh, if you haven't downloaded their software, it can be downloaded from their website. Make sure you get the drivers as well and uh, let's get started. Uh, once you open it up, you'll be You'll, you'll see the connect window. Uh, the, the bit rate will be what you want to play with. That's going to be vital for you to have successful operations with your device. Um, the CAN bus that I'll be working with today is one megabit. Uh, if you're working with an OE, like the OBD2 port, most of those are going to be 500K. Um, if, and hopefully if it's anything else, you already know what, what bit rate you need. Um, the acceptance filters I leave as default, but you can set up acceptance filtering if you know if you know what messages you're specifically looking for and want to ignore everything else. That's fine. Um, and then listen only mode, which I typically leave unchecked. And uh, let's go back. Let's get started. So I have a device that's I'm receiving messages um, from. It is uh, the cycle time here is in milliseconds on both the receive, send and receive or receive and transmit sides. Uh, and count here it says how many times I've seen that message total. If I um, if I if I wanted to clear it out, I can just hit this button here. We can clear it out and restart everything, and and we get to start start fresh, right? I have a uh, transmit message already set up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and right click it and go edit message just so we can see what's going on here. We have our ID in hex, our length, and then our data in hex. Uh, we can adjust it if need be, and um, you know set everything up. Our cycle time we have is one thousand milliseconds, and I have it set as paused, which is fine. If we needed an extended frame, we could set here, set the check mark here, as well as remote request there. Um, comment sections typically just for you, just to reference what message, what that message is. So if you, it's not used by anything but yourself. Um, and then as for sending the message right now, we can either do one of two, two things. We can either check this checks box here, which it'll send it on the cycle time. Or if we double click on the ID, it'll trigger it or the length, it'll trigger it. Everything else will basically open it up to see what you can add it. Um, for logging messages, we have to go to the trace window here. Uh, once we're on the trace window, we can right click and click start. And then we see all our messages being received. Um, we can also pause it. Once I stop it, we have the ability to save the trace file as they call it. Uh, we'll save it as trace. Yeah, I'll replace this one. And it is saved. Once I go to start again, it'll clear the queue and we can restart and we can stop again and save again and save it as a different name as necessary. Um, we have the options of a linear buffer or ring buffer. So if you're doing, if you're, you have a limit of, I believe it's 10 million messages to uh, adjust. If you need to adjust the, the buffer size, it is right here under trace, but we can set a linear buffer and a ring buffer. A ring buffer will basically clear out the oldest messages and, and start basically just keeping the newest 10 million messages, so to speak. A linear buffer will just stop once it's done. So once the buffer's full, it just ignores any more messages that you have. You can also choose between logging error frames and logging uh, error counter changes as well if you're having an issue and you're trying to log errors. Um, that's about it for PCAN Viewer. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be able to answer them. I'll try to answer them as efficiently as I can. Um, all, uh, all things else, I hope this uh, video helps you and I appreciate you watching.